Hi YouTube, since Kazuha is getting a rerun in second half of Pokemon 5, let's learn how to build Kazuha in under 10 minutes and do more damage. Starting off with his talents, since Kazuha is a character whose buffs mainly scale from EM, so leveling him up is actually very essential. So the leveling up priority should be something like Kazuha level 90 over burst over normal attack equals to skill. The reasons for this is pretty simple. Normal attacks for Kazuha are standard stuff. Nothing too important, however, leveling up this normal attack will result in more damage from the A1 plunge. Elemental skill, the main source of his crowd control, he lunges up in the air pulling enemies in and with a normal click he does a plunge damage dealing damage to the enemies. Note that Kazuha can also absorb an element allowing him to do additional plunge damage and the elemental absorption priority is as follows, pyro over hydro over electro over cryo. Pyro taking the most priority when it comes to elemental absorption, and Cryo taking the least. He also has two variations of elemental skill which are tap and hold version. In different scenarios, tap and hold version have their own use cases, and here's a normal table showcasing the differences. And finally, moving on to his elemental burst. Apart from making us completely blind for its entire duration, here's what else his elemental burst, the Kazuha Slash, does. It deals an instant of slash damage with scales from attack which is pretty normal stuff and then it creates an elemental field which observes a certain element it can swallow an element from an enemy which gives you the a4 passive it can consistently swirl enemies and the absorption priorities are based on pyro over hydro over electro over cryo which brings us to the perfect segue to move on to the passives a1. Kazuha's elemental skill observes an additional element and deals additional elemental damage when executing the elemental skill. Now the elemental observation again follows the Pachek rule and uh, the damage you do from ascension 1 plunge damage basically scales up from his normal attack. That's why I mentioned it's important to level up his normal attacks as well. Now ascension 4 passive which is by far the most important ascension passive that Kazuha has it simplifies down to every single point of elemental mastery Kazuha has. It provides the entire team member 0.04% of elemental damage bonus for 8 seconds after swirling that element. Let's say for example if your Kazuha has 1000 EM, he can provide up to 40% elemental damage bonus to your entire party of the same element he swirls. Also, a key thing to remember that Kazuha can swirl two different elements in this manner, thus providing the elemental damage bonus to two elements. Now, let's move on to the constellations for Kazuha. Kazuha is a character who is absolutely great at C0, however, his constellations do bring him some value. C1 reduces the cooldown of his skill by 10% and after using his burst, his skill cooldown is resetted so you can actually go an EQE combo. C2 gives Kazuha 200 additional EM inside the burst radius and increases the EM of every party member by overall 200. A great damage buff to the entire team should be a very good stopping point if you are a diehard Kazuha fan. C3 is skill plus 3 levels, C5 is burst 3 levels, C4 allows Kazuha to run a slightly low amount of ER and also whenever you glide with the C4 you also re regenerate particles for your burst so that's a really nice handy quality of life upgrade. C6 gives Kazuha 5 seconds of a Nemo infusion on his normal attacks after you use a skill or burst a great dps constellations but at the steep price of 1000 plus usd it's not exactly the best constellation according to me moving on to his artifacts corpus vb yep that's the artifacts that you should aim for be it a dps build or an em support build corpus vb is the best value providing resistance shred and increasing swell damage benefiting Kazuha's entire kit a lot. So, 4 Piece VV provides you 60% extra swirl damage and 40% elemental resistance shred on infused element. For main stats, for your artifacts, your priority should be enough amount of ER first and then everything into EM. Now, generally, if you're running an EM weapon, you have to go for an ER Sans, EM Goblet, and EM Circlet. But if you're running a weapon such as the Favonius Sword, which has ER substats, you can actually go EM, EM, and EM builds. However, there are some niche situations where Kazuha can run 4-piece Thundering Fury, but even then, I would still recommend you to go 4-piece VV over everything else.
Now, moving on to his weapons, generally the weapons for Kazuha can be divided into two broad categories, ER and EM weapons. Freedom Spawn, with a substat giving EM, also Kazuha's signature weapon, is his best of love weapon in a lot of the elemental theme comps. The only downside to this weapon is that it's a gacha weapon so you have to spend wishes and if you end up losing 50-50 twice on the weapon banner, you can actually go pretty deep into it. Cyphos Moonlit and on 5, this 4 star weapon is considered to be Kazuha's best and slow weapon for its EM substat and ER passive. However, this is a gacha weapon so keep that in mind. Even in R1, it's a great option but at R5, it even gives some of the 5 star options a run for their money. Next is my personal favorite, the Favonius Sword, also known as the Fabge. The reason Favonius Sword is such a great option is because at R5, even at R1, it provides a lot of energy particles to your entire team. So not only it helps Kazuha getting his burst up, but Kazuha doing normal attacks or critting every once in a while makes Kazuha generate white energy particles that enables the entire team to get their burst up quickly. Another great option for Kazuha is the Sacrificial Sword. It allows Kazuha to reset his skill cooldown whenever you proc the Sacrificial Sword passive, but the only downside for Sacrificial Sword is that it's most of the time better off running on Ching Cho. If you have two or five sacrificial swords then you can give one of them to Kazuha but most of the accounts do not have two sacrificial swords at R5 so generally Ishing Cho is better off running sacrificial sword but if you have an extra you can give it to Kazuha. Note that for all the weapons I mentioned right now Freedom Swan is the only weapon that does not have any form of ER either from substats or from passive therefore you have to run an ER sense with the Freedom Swan to reach the 180 to 190 energy requirement for Kazuha's burst to get off of cooldown and for the other weapons such as Cyphos Moonlit, Sacrificial Sword and the Favonius Sword they have some form of ER either in their substats or passive so you should have no trouble running triple EM on those builds. But still, getting about 4 to 6 ER substat rolls on the artifacts is considered to be really nice to have on these other options. And finally, here's a showcase of my F2P Kazuha buffing my Miko's damage, so you guys can have an idea how much difference does actually Kazuha make in your damage. Well, that was a very nice damage increase, but full disclosure guys, my Miko is C6, so your damage numbers will be different from my numbers, but I think the ratio should remain still the same. And with that being said, I'm very excited for Kazuha, I hope you're too, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.